really, really important that we understand what first what whiteness is. It totally skews our view of everything. Whiteness is a cult. America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. Oh. They will always come to the defense of their cult members. Get out of here. <laughs> so if I defend a white person, right? If I defend a white person, I'm part of their cult. <laughs> But I'm black. Oh, yes, man. I got one of my favorite YouTubers on my screen right now. This is Mark Dice. What happened to white couples in television commercials? I like Mark Dice, man. I'll go to war with this man anytime because it's just... I, I, listen, I, I don't care about skin color. I'm, I'm in a diverse community myself. Um, we, we go to a church where it's like, very diverse we don't even like we don't even talk about race <laughs> our church our families very diverse we have all type of friends and to like we don't live in a world where skin color is the thing to talk about like we don't care <laughs> like we really don't care <laughs> um so i mean I, I love this man because he just makes sense when he speaks and you don't have to like everything he says and i love the fact that he speaks for white people. I think there needs to be a voice of protest against the racism toward white people today. And I'm, I'm saying this to be in all honesty. It's, it's a real thing. I even heard my my pastor recently, my senior pastor, who, who is a cock, you know, who is a white man. And he was kind of like alluding to that. It's like, yeah, it's just crazy. Like all this racism toward whites is like. What's up with that? He's like, he's waking up to it kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's been going on, man. <laughs> that's been going on. It's reverse racism, man. It's anti-whiteism. That's what you're dealing with. But nevertheless, let's take a listen to the man. I'm going to put a description. I'm going to put a link in the description below. I'm going to enjoy the reaction video. Yeah, I have been noticing that there isn't many white couples in commercials anymore. And I was wondering, what's up with that? Well, let's take a listen, friends. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Without further ado, let us now get into the heart of the message. Ever since the Black Lives Matter insurrection in the summer of 2020 for George Floyd, who was canonized as a saint, the pandering to black people and promotion and celebration of blackness went supernova and all the Fortune 500 companies started obsessing over diversity, equity, and inclusion. So now it's nearly impossible to even find a white couple or a white family featured in television commercials because diversity is a cultural Marxist code word for less white people. During the commercial breaks now, it feels like you're watching BET, the black entertainment channel. No matter what channel you're on, they're saturated with mixed race couples and of course, interracial gay couples wow. to the point that they're so dramatically overrepresented that viewers couldn't help but notice. Although few white people dared say anything critical about it for several years because of the usual fears. I didn't know it was that bad. I did see in many movies and stuff like that, this was going on. And then also some commercials. But I, I mean, I don't watch television like that anyway. So I'm more like, if I'm watching anything, it's on YouTube. So, <laughs> so I pay more attention to the alternative media than I spend time listening to. I don't, we don't have cable at home. So we don't know. I really don't know. I haven't noticed that. But wow. That's crazy. Years of being called racist. At one point, <laughs> comedian Adam Carolla couldn't hold back and tweeted, according to TV car ads, fully 86% of Americans are interracial couples who spend their weekends camping with outdoor theater setups. <laughs> Joe Biden noticed too, but he thinks it's great. During a town hall event two years ago, when he was touting the avalanche of diversity, he said this. And I'm going to say something's going to get me in trouble, which I couldn't go through a whole show without doing that. Did you ever five years ago think every second or third ad out of five or six you'd turn on would be biracial couples? Mm. And another time when boasting about wow. the progress America was making under his administration, he again basically said the same thing. I challenge you, find today when you turn on the stations, sit on one station for two hours. And I don't know how many commercials you'll see. Mm -hmm. Like eight to five. Two to three out of five mm. have mixed race couples in them. Wow. That's not by accident. Of course it's not. Of course it's not by accident, Joe. It's all about diversity. I think this is, I don't care. There are mixed couples everywhere. I live in PA and we have a lot of mixed couples here. Um, 
yeah, I have a half white son myself. So, um, yeah, so I don't think it really matters in a sense that they think, but I think that them using that in a political sense is po- it's probably not a good thing. Not only is this going to hurt black families, it will also hurt white families. But I'll tell you the other truth, though. I think white families will be just fine. The real families that are going to be hurt are the minorities. I'll explain to you later. Let's keep going. It's not by accident. It's part of the plan to abolish whiteness, as the Marxists <laughs> openly <laughs> admit. I think it's really, really important that we understand what, first, what whiteness is. It's sinful. Whenever you see a person talking with this book behind them, How to Be an Anti-Racist, with uh, Abram X. Candy, yeah, policing black men, color of law. I mean, that is crazy that, uh, wow, uprooting racism, teaching for black lives. Well, maybe, I mean, it's just everything behind her is loaded in racism. So what do you think, what kind of, what kind of mentality do you think a person like this might have? With all due respect now, <laughs> all points. <laughs> that we understand what first, what whiteness is. It's sinful. That's a priest. It is a sinful violent identity construct so being white is sinful so whiteness is sinful what they're using whiteness in a sense of white supremacy it's also good to have context for stuff like this although these are short clips i get it but i've listened to other videos from some of these people they they do say it is like they're saying your whiteness is heavy and it's like oh man this is like i mean come on it's 2023 like Grow up, and you're not supposed to be in a church talking about stuff like this. This is, like, so anti-Christian. It's everything that Jesus came to undo. Like, the entire system messages that is rooted in racism, that is going after one race, is one thing you should not be doing in a, in a church. But again, this is epic, epis, episcopal priest. It's an episcopal priest. I don't know how a priest is a woman. That's another discussion in itself. <laughs> we just I just look at the Bible. I've never found a, a, a woman priest. The only woman priest we ever had was Jezebel. But never, nevertheless, anyway, let's, let's leave that alone. Let's move on. And culture. Because first of all, whiteness emerges as a construct always in opposition to that which is not white. Oh. That's the way to merge. Stop it. It's an oppositional construct. Mm-hmm. And as such, it is a construct that is always denigrating and dehumanizing of that which is not white. And mm-hmm. anything in the ideological system, structure, construct that is denigrating, uh, dehumanizing is violent. And so it's a violent construct. Mm-hmm. It's sinful. Being white is violent, is sinful, is dehumanizing. Whiteness is the issue. <laughs> but... Who's hurting all the blacks' families today? Like, the blacks' families who just died in Chicago over the uh, Memorial Weekend. Yeah, we we had June 10th doing that. Uh, black parties and so on. Uh, over 50-something people were shot. And who did the shooting? How, how violent is whiteness when black families are killing themselves? When bl- bl- black sons are gunning down their own race at a much at such a rate that is like white supremacists didn't even destroy us as as, as fast as I mean as we destroy ourselves. I, I just can't understand the nature of this argument at all when black families are dying. Like when our abortion rate is up to the roof. Like crazy. More than almost half of the abortion taking place in this country is done by a minority group, black families, like black women. <laughs> it's like okay. And then you saying white people are the problem. Whiteness is the issue. It's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> please stop. America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. Oh, stop. On, on full display. See, part of the challenge of, around <laughs> whiteness is that it totally skews our view of everything. Whiteness is a cult. Oh, and- not... <laughs> she's... Oh, man, she's so racist. I, I, I listened to her several times before I had a video about this girl. I think maybe she's trolling or she's just pure racist, but she is just, she just hate white people. Like, I will feel sorry for her. Like, I will not be the kind of person doing stuff like this because you can really put yourself in a position where you can get hurt when you talk like that. You have to understand, you can get docs online and there are some people who might listen to you talking like this 
they might come after you and your families, especially when you push in that kind of rhetoric. I will not recommend listening to this girl at all. She's really, her mind is really twisted. They will always come to the defense of their cult members. I think that white... <laughs> Whiteness is a cult, and they will always come to the defense of their cult members. Get out of here. <laughs> so if I defend a white person, right, if I defend a white person, I'm part of their cult. <laughs> but I'm black. So what about the, the white people who fought for to end racism and to abolish slavery? Are we going to give them a trophy? You see, they never spoke about these people, do they? Barely. They don't mention their names. <laughs> so, and you can look online, man. Some of those white people who, some of them were lynched. Some of them went to war <laughs> to end slavery. But again, we, we're just going to overlook. You know, never happened. Let's revise history. <laughs> I think that white people are committed to being villains in the aggregate, right? They are so corrupt. You know, their thinking is so morally and spiritually bankrupt about power that they can't let, you know, they fear viscerally, existentially letting go of power. What ass? She is so racist. <laughs> Poor thing. She needs a lot of prayer. It's on Facebook last year. If anybody else felt like they're watching BET during the commercial breaks on TV, even on Fox News, since I hadn't seen a white couple for over a week, the post got over 30,000 likes and more than 10,000 comments from people who are also mm. noticing the obvious. Shortly after my Facebook post, actor Kevin Serbo tweeted, is it just me or have you also noticed that TV commercials in the last two years have had major casting changes oh yeah <laughs> everyone noticed but few people would say anything about it because again they didn't want to be called racist gavin sorbo was even afraid obviously dancing around what he was really thinking in his tweet jake from state farm the phone operator in the state farm insurance commercials mysteriously turned black which is perhaps <laughs> the first race swap in a commercial years wow. ago something that is now a common occurrence in film franchises the tide laundry detergent company has a commercial showing two lesbians who are both white folding laundry and talking about how their kids so they can be white if they're lesbians but they cannot be a white couple it does make oh, i see the difference so having a white couple is the real issue here not only white couple but also black couples too i, I don't see they're not so okay i get it this is an attack on the family <laughs> okay it's always been an attack on the family that's the Marxist. Enemy number one, destroy the family. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we get you. I think there is also, uh, what was that video? Uh, um, sheesh, let me pull them up. It is uh, Spider-Man, Black Spider-Man. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it's bigger than Miles Morales now. Yeah, there it is. It just came out. It just came out. Yeah, that, that right there. This one right there. Yeah, man. Spider-Man is no longer white. It was pretty normal. The white guy is still in the picture, but he takes the back seat. He's like, man, hold my beer, bro. <laughs> I am the new Spider-Man now. Get rid of the white guy. <laughs> so we got all these black people being positioned, taking over and substituting white, you know, position in, 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 in these... Oh, I mean, it's just, I mean, whatever. Like, okay, I think represent, representation does matter. There are black families who will see this and say, you know what, this inspires me. I think like Michael Jackson, you know. Okay, let me, Michael Jordan is what I meant to talk. I mean, Michael Jackson too, of course. But Michael Jordan definitely inspired a lot of blacks to like, you know, you know play basketball and do the best that they could. And I think that does make a difference. Um, to be honest with you, I think it does. But the difference is he didn't have to replace somebody else, though. You see, the difference, that's the problem here, is that we get it, we're kicking whites out of these roles and we're replacing them with blacks in, in the hope that, you see, he was the, he was the Spider-Man before. He's got kicked to the curb. Of course, he's in a movie. Peter Parker is still there. He shows up here and there to do a little this and that. But the kid who's really running the show is the black kid. Yeah, this is the guy who runs the show now. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's actually a new trailer, by the way. Coming out soon, Black Spider-Man. We get rid of the white guy. <laughs> it's crazy. Kids always get their clothes dirty, and then it cuts to them playing in the backyard, and they're black. <laughs> <laughs> Two white lesbians oh, with some adopted Lord, yes. black kids for 
extra per. diversity. Perfect. Progressive auto insurance has numerous commercials featuring married. But oftentimes when they feature the white guy, he's always like silly, dumb, old school. He doesn't look like fun. They don't pick up, they don't pick like a successful white man to match these black couples. It's kind of like these black women. It's almost like the black girl always look better, but the the, the, the the husband or boyfriend, the white boyfriend, he's almost like <laughs> straight white male is <laughs> the issue. Like what? These people are really ridiculous with this thing. And couples depicted as new homeowners where the husband is white with a black wife. Geico then followed suit using mixed race couples in their commercials too. Uh -huh. There are too many major brands doing it to count. And what started off as just a few isolated instances uh -huh is now the standard practice in advertising. There's a meme that was created by a comic called Stone Toss showing a man in a meeting pitching an ad campaign to sell burgers. And the proposed advertisement <laughs> just shows a black person and a white person kissing with the caption, tasty. tasty. Another member of the meeting <laughs> looks on skeptically and asks, are you sure that this will help us sell burgers? burgers the presenter asks because the intention was obviously to promote mixed race couples not the actual <laughs> product and exactly. thus a meme was born and of course the adl has denounced the artist stone toss as racist so <laughs> you know he's funny comedian chris rock <laughs> joked in his latest netflix special yeah. that he even feels bad for white people because there aren't any more white couples in commercials anymore True. adding this what would make white men think they lose in the country what 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 what, because there's no more white couples in commercials? True. There's no black couples either. <laughs> yeah. Every commercial has a mixed race couple. Everything. Yeah, the brand and conservative commentators won't say anything about it, though, because they don't want to appear as if they're standing up for white people, because mm -hmm. that's the ultimate taboo in America. White people are supposed to bow their heads in shame and constantly apologize for <laughs> existing. <laughs> apologize for being white. Uh, you better not. <laughs> you better just be yourself. Don't let these people play with you like that. Always put black people on a pedestal because... 150 years ago, their ancestors were slaves. Well, boo who? Once white people are a minority in the well, United States. I, I want to say we can't take this lightly. It was a real issue. It did happen, and and it was it was painful. Okay, slavery is not something to laugh at. I don't. It was bad. However, whites were slaves too, not to the same amount, of course. But when you study the white Irish, even today, recently, somebody said you need to check out was going on in certain parts of Africa with the white farmers that their lands are being taken from them by blacks in Africa. Taboo. And all of that, so them saying in every civilization there's always been slavery. So uh, just looking at American slavery as the only determined factor of what slavery has ever been and judge white people simply because of that, which day to day have nothing to do with how many white person today you know owns a slave zero and i think the real issue in slavery that i've talked about in this channel and i keep talking about this is what's happening in child trafficking okay what's happening with these children that are being sold into slave labor and for sex i think these kids we need to advocate more for them but the 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 liberals <laughs> The, 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 the conservatives, very few of them are raising a voice of protest against child trafficking, where I think the real slavery to $151 billion a year, where these children are being used by pedo. You can finish the statement here. And, and they're being abused by men. <sighs> Don't get me started. Now, you really want to touch a chord in me? Talk about that. Now, you want to talk about slavery of the past? Fine, we can talk about that. But I'm telling you, it's the past. We've grown. We've emerged. We've, we, we've, we've done a lot of progress. Things have gotten better. You know, here I am on YouTube. Majority of you who follow me are white. I don't understand. If this country is so, so racist, I, why do I have people that are white who, who listen to me? <laughs> It's not like I can't talk. It's not like I'm very <laughs> captivating. It's not like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the best YouTuber in the world. No, they, they listen because they want to. They like what they're hearing and they think it relates to them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I have people that I listen to. Listen, Mark Dice, he's white. I could care less. <laughs> like I, care, I care for truth and I care for common sense. 
And at the end of the day, we all young one people. It doesn't matter what skin color we are. One father, pigmentation in our skin is not really what defines who we are. It's about characteristics and it's about love. That's how I make my decision. Anyway, I know y'all gonna call me an Uncle Tom. States estimated to occur around 2045. Will it then be okay for a white entertainment channel like black people have BET, black entertainment television? Will white people be able to have a Miss White USA pageant since mm -hmm. blacks, Latinos, and Asians have their own beauty pageants for their race? Mm -hmm. Once whites become a minority in America, can we have white student clubs on college campuses <laughs> like the black, Asian, and Latino student organizations? Will it be okay for a white person to say that they're proud to be white? No, no, it won't. The special interest groups for black. It's okay to be white. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to make this part of my thumbnail. This is perfect. Six minutes and 52 seconds. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> person to say that they're proud to be white? No, no, it won't. The special interest groups for blacks, Latinos, and <clears throat> another ethnic group will get unhinged. <laughs> Okay, Mark Dice, I see you. I hope you get to see this reaction video. <laughs> Mark Dice said, in another special group, we can't say their name. If you even say their name, that's anti-Semitic. You can't even say their name. <laughs> we just got to love that. The special interest groups for blacks, Latinos, and <clears throat> another ethnic group <clears throat> will get unhinged and scream that white supremacy has tried to resurrect itself. And White people had their turn, they'll say, and don't deserve to be proud of their race or culture because mm -hmm. they enslaved black people hundreds of years ago. White people must forever bow down to the new Latino, black, and Asian majority and live the rest of our lives in servitude to the new ruling class to atone for the sins of our white ancestors, they'll demand. <laughs> of course, black people ignore the fact that virtually all countries in the ancient world had slaves. Amen. Maybe we should point out that black Muslim tribes in Africa actually sold other Africans mm. to the European slave traders who yep. brought them to North America. Facts. Africa is also the world's leader in modern day slavery, where millions of people <sighs> remain trapped in forced labor today. Not to Yeah, yeah, whether you're preaching now. <laughs> That's why I love this guy. He tells it like it is. Imagine one million white Europeans from Britain and Southern Europe were kidnapped by Barbary pirates, mm -hmm. Muslims from the Barbary Coast, a region yep. in North Africa. Listen to Thomas Sowell. Uh, everything this man is saying, I've either read or I've listened from Thomas Sowell's book. Facts, facts, facts. And brought to Africa as slaves mm -hmm. between the 16th and 19th century. Yep. Yes, white people were enslaved in Africa. Yep. Maybe it's time Europeans start demanding reparations from Africa. Of course, mm -hmm. black TV shows are always celebrated as being important because black people need to identify with the characters and their experiences while every show featuring a white mm. family or a white mm. group of friends is denounced for being too white. Mm. And when the question is raised about a white counterpart to BET or white only shows and movies, the knee jerk reaction is always to claim that the majority of entertainment is produced for white people, but with forced diversity being injected into almost every single television show, movie, and even commercials now, which all do their best to make sure that there are an equal number of white, black, Asian, and Latino characters, the claim that white people have entertainment that is a reflection of our own family, community, and culture is now null and void. If you enjoy <laughs> watching my serious monologues like this, then you'll really enjoy reading my books because there's so mm -hmm. much more information in them that I can't get into on YouTube for obvious reasons. So order my book, Hollywood Propaganda, How TV, Movies, and Music Shape Our Culture in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebooks from any of the major ebook stores. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it, head on over there, and check it out. <laughs> Mark Dice, I understand you, but man, I understand you, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually on your team, brother, because I think you just make sense. <laughs> to me, I just don't care. Skin color doesn't matter to me. It never does. It never will be. Maybe it's because I'm from Haiti. We just, we don't see. We see success. <laughs> we see hard work. We see intellect. Uh, that's kind of how we look at people. We look at character and somebody's spiritual condition, but... Uh, we don't see we don't see color. Yeah, we we see money in Haiti. <laughs> Haitian love some money, but um, 
but we really like I think that's part of what is in me that made me think that way. So, you know, some blacks will come on my channel and say, "Man, you da 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 da. You weren't raised in this country. You have no idea what you're talking about." Let, I said, "Wanna? I wanna show you something quickly." He said, "You see this flag? That's my flag right here." <laughs> Well, Haitians themselves, I think George Floyd uh, somewhat has some Haitian in him. Haitians supported this movement. I wasn't so much in it, but I can understand. They were trying to sympathize with the death of George Floyd. But I'm just saying, this is the flag that a lot of black Americans will kind of like go after. They don't like, you know, those type of Western uh, you know, blacks and stuff. Anyway, Westerners today. I mean, not Westerners, but West Indies. <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say, but again, where do I stand? I stand where Jesus stands. I, I'm really like the kind of person, and I think, to be honest, like canceling white people from TV shows and so on is not going to have an impact on them as a people. Now, I think it will bolster our ego. <laughs> Those of us who are blacks and who are racist, we might think we're going somewhere, and I think it can benefit some black people. As a matter of fact, representation does matter to a case because you see it, you, you want to be like it, and that makes sense. But um, but you think white families are going to fall apart because they're not on your televisions anymore because you got mixed couples? I don't think so. I think there's an attack on the families, like the Marxist theory that's being played out. You know, enemy number one is the family, so we got to take them out. Um, Alex Star Crowley said that. So... This goal is just so that we we got to destroy the nuclear family where God is passed down to the children and society benefits from it. It's just the goal is to attack God and the Christian God to destroy the family and destroy society and communities and destroy the world. And that's what we're looking at. Um, I don't think black families, white families are going to stop being white. You know why? Because they know about money. Yeah. Financial literacy. And they also putting a lot of work and they are very business minded. And a lot of white families take their families to church. <laughs> so they got they got they got the recipe to continue to prosper. And that's why when you go to all these different communities, you see white families are doing fine. In many cases, white people are doing okay. But when you go to black families, it's not really the case, depending on which blacks. American blacks are different, but West Indies blacks. We're doing just fine, bro. <laughs> praise God, we're doing fine. <laughs> Me and my wife and our children, praise the Lord. God has been so good to us. We're not going to boast, but I'm just saying we're doing just fine. But a lot of blacks families where the fathers are absent and uh, the absentee, uh, the, the, the abortion rate is high. And these families are not, you know, mothers doing everything that they could is really hurting those families. And I think putting black characters on television and mixed couples is really not fixing anything because it's not strengthening families. Now, showing black couples in families makes sense. Um, but you also got to be balanced showing white couples as well. But again, that's not really where the solution is because you got to get to the root, man. The homes are broken. and The same people that are pushing this stuff, they're pushing abortion on the black families when abortion in itself at the root of it is racism. And affirmative actions got struck down. So <laughs> thank God for that one. So it's just that they're not really fixing anything in black families. So I don't really believe this notion that we're trying to help you guys out. No, you're not helping anybody out. You're helping out yourself. Here is the thing. There is neither Jew nor Greek, nor bond, nor free, nor male, nor female. For you are all one in Jesus Christ. There it is, my friend. This is where I stand. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. No skin color here. <laughs> no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female, no gender, no ethnicity. It's all about believing in Christ. And that's where I take my stand. Mark Dice. Appreciate you, man. Keep on putting the work. Speak your mind. Speak for your people. I don't care. I'll stand with you. Because I do see it as well. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of racism. I don't care who is doing it or against who it is being done. I just hate it <laughs> and I'll speak against it whenever I see it. And that's my stand. And you have the right to be a voice for the people. And guess what? You're not wrong. Appreciate you. Love your YouTube channel. Thumbs up. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. If you enjoyed this reaction video, it's been a good day. Thank you so much for listening. Comment below.
Check out our merch. Check out our store. Links in the description below. Until next time, and as always, set your eyes on him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Look unto Jesus now and live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.